I'm not going to tell you that milk is causing diabetes. I think that would be pretty darn wild to say. But the newer science that's coming out is helping us understand that there's more of a plausible link between diabetes and dairy consumption than maybe we thought before. And when we're looking at this, we're predominantly looking at type 1 diabetes, but with this, it's unfolding some research that's helping us understand that dairy has a potential influence on glucose levels in the short and long term from sort of an epigenetic or more so gene expression perspective that's eye-opening to say the least. So let's understand this newer literature. And after today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. And they are absolutely leading the charge with the best and most concrete clinical trials when it comes down to the gut microbiome. So whether you like their product or use their product or not, I applaud them for paving the way with the scientific literature, even if it doesn't come back and support their product 100% of the time. I love that. But when it comes down to a product, they are hands down the only probiotic I would ever recommend because they actually put science first and the product legitimately works, unlike about 99% of other probiotics that just get destroyed in the gut by the time you take them anyway. So anyhow, that link is down below for 25% off, and you'll see when I'm talking about even dairy in this video that so much of the understanding and the link between dairy and some of these issues is gut-related. So let's go ahead and break it down. So I'm going to open this up with a study that was published in the Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism. This isn't the big piece that I want to talk about. We're going to get into more detail because this is what is called an observational study. And observational studies, although they serve a very solid purpose, they're not concrete. Correlation doesn't always equal causation. But what this study did is it analyzed two different groups. Groups that consumed a lot of cow milk when they were two around age two, and groups that had consumed a significant amount of cow milk between the ages of 11 and 14. The differences between these groups were wildly interesting. Okay, obviously the two-year-olds, they were looking at more like cow milk formula in this case, but still cow milk oriented. What they found is that when a large amount of this particular milk, in this case, A1 variety, which is normal milk that we would have in the United States, there was a significant increase in type one diabetes later on in life like noticeably big difference. Here's what's interesting. If they were consuming a larger amount of milk between the ages of 11 and 14, there was not nearly the increase. What is this telling us? Well, again, this is observational, so we need to unpack it with other literature, right? We need to look at more mechanistic stuff. But what we look at kind of big picture first is that there is a connection between the type of milk that we consider to be normal in the United States, which is called the A1 variety. It's the A1 breed of cattle. And this is a genetic variety of cattle that came in a while ago because it produced more milk. It's not genetically modified or anything like that. It's just a breed of cattle, right? Now, when you look at A2 varieties, which you see in a lot of different parts of Europe, and a little bit if you look carefully at the stores in the United States, this doesn't seem to have the same impact. And the reason that I say this is because A2 milk does not have the BCM7 peptides that become basically bioactively like available, bioavailable in our body, like the A1 variety has. So if we look at another study that was published in the journal Peptides, this study looked at 37 people that were breastfed compared to 53 people that were cow milk formula fed. It's not about the formula I'm talking about right here. It's more about the cow milk emphasis. What they found is that there was a significant increase in the level of BCM7, again, the bioactive peptide that is in the A1 variety milk. So there's an increase in BCM in the bodies of the people that were consuming more of the cow milk formula. With this they ended up seeing a delay in neuronal development. There was a delay in psychomotor development. And I'm not saying this to kind of get on my high horse there with anything pediatric related. My point here is that the A1 variety causes a potential increase in this BCM7. And we've seen this across the board in other studies. But now we need to talk about from a diabetes perspective, how could this be influencing both type one and possibly even type two? Well, type one, that's autoimmune. So we have some evidence, both mechanistically and other observational stuff, that demonstrates that BCM7 can impact 
basically the immunomodulatory effect within the gut. Okay, there might be an immunosuppressive effect in the gut. But we also see that there's changes in gut permeability. And I'll talk about some other studies with direct like human data that looks at like how A1 versus A2 affects the gut and affects digestion and everything. But increases in gut permeability with BCM7 coming from A1 varieties of milk. Not to mention BCM7 has an opioid effect that seems to modulate glucose metabolism and modulate and possibly even impair glucose. So what we look at is, okay, from a long-term perspective, is there a potential that consuming this one variety of milk that basically dominates our dairy industry could have a link with the inability to manage glucose properly, whether it's from a potential autoimmune perspective or from even a T2D type state later on in life. Now, if you look at a study published in Nutrition Journal, this study took a look at 45 people and it had them consume either A1 type milk or A2 type milk for two weeks. And then they crossed over in the group that did the A1, switched to A2, et cetera, et cetera. So they switched. Okay, and what they found with this is that the people that consumed the A1 milk had severe digestive issues. The people that consumed the A1 milk had increases in inflammatory markers. They had decreases in cognitive performance on a cognitive test, and they ended up having worsened GI function. They ended up having a higher error rate on different cognitive tests, and they had overall worse gut composition, so lower short chain fatty acids. So we know with pretty decent detail that A1 variety milk causes an impact to the gut. Okay, what people don't always connect the dots with is how much the gut is correlated with glucose metabolism. So I'm not just trying to infer random points here. I'm not trying to connect the dots. I'm not playing that game. I'm looking at the cold hard facts of saying like, okay, we see that there is a link in terms of immunomodulatory effects, gut permeability, digestion. We know with other data that BCM7 has an impact on like opioid like effect in the, gut, in the body and the gut that can influence glucose metabolism. It makes us wonder, well, we know that some of these conditions are more inflammatory in nature. Diabetes and insulin resistance, for example, isn't just the effect of like having sugar and causing a problem. It's much more inflammatory at a high level than just that. Mismanaged glucose levels that happen as a result of insulin resistance are like a secondary, almost casualty of a bigger inflammatory issue where insulin resistance takes place. I'm not saying that sugar isn't the problem and isn't a problem, but I am saying that how it manifests into us seeing the inability to tolerate sugar is merely a downstream effect of a bigger problem that's happening. I'm making it very clear once again that I'm not trying to come at the dairy industry. I feel like we have solid reason why A1 variety of cattle exist. But I think that we now have enough literature to start to maybe poke holes and go to a type of cattle that maybe they use more in Europe. And again, if you look around, there are brands that use A2 variety type. Like there's literally a brand called A2. There's a brand that's getting really popular now called Pioneer Pastures that I've talked about on this channel. They're like at Target and things like that. They do exist. You just have to look for them. So how do you use this? if you're looking at things like insulin resistance, et cetera. I suggest going for like A2 type milks for one, just because it's probably something that's worth doing, but also go for more filtered type milk that has a lower sugar content in the first place and a higher protein content, just because that's a better metabolic state to look at anyway. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.